My talk today uh, is going to be really at 10,000 meters because I don't have a lot of time. I'm going to try to cover during the first part the ways in which we recognize and appreciate infectious agents, not only as causes of acute disease that we recognize as infectious, but also some of those where it's more difficult to make the connection, like autism and cancer. And then I'm going to spend the second portion talking about viruses in a different way, thinking about social media and the ways in which we can use models of infectious diseases to understand political instability, racism, hatred, and so forth. So I've never shown that particular part before, but it interests me more and more, and I think it's very important, and I think there are lessons from infectious diseases that will be helpful. This is a slide which illustrates all the things we work on. We're best known for virus work uh, in our center, but we work with bacteria, the microbiome, fungi, and other infectious agents as well. This is from the cholera outbreak in London in the 1850s. And the person who was key in resolving this problem was John Snow, who is probably, in my field, best known for his work in epidemiology, but many people know him as the one who gave chloroform to uh, Queen Victoria during childbirth. Uh, and in fact, he's as famous for that as he is for his work in infectious diseases. And the new program that you have in India, which is installation of toilets and so forth, really dates back to thinking about these sorts of uh, fecal-oral diseases that are so important. What we now use, of course, is modeling to try to figure out where infectious agents are likely to emerge based on changes in population, deforestation, contact with animals, and then we bring sequencers to bear. And this is an example of one such sequencer. When I first began this kind of work, I was still in training at that point. University of California at San Francisco when HIV AIDS first appeared and we didn't even recognize the agent for some two years. So I invested several years of my life trying to develop new genetic methods that are rapid and powerful that allow us to sort this out. And these are some examples of some of these platforms including a very small one there that can go into a USB port. I've been coming to India since 1997, initially working at the International Center for Genetic Engineering and Biotechnology. And one of the things I would very much like to persuade you of today is that the technologies that I'll be describing are straightforward. And there is no reason that without a, with a very small investment, India could have a surveillance system on par and perhaps better than anywhere else in the world. And if there are any philanthropists or ministers who would like to talk about how to do that, I would be very happy to meet with you during the conclave or afterward, because the time has come to address these sorts of problems. So we've discovered over 1,500 viruses. We don't even count them anymore because there are so many of them. And they're very important viruses. 10% of them, I would say, have implications for human health or for food security. The methods have become so robust now that within a period of 24 hours, for about 200 US dollars, we can take an environmental sample, a sample from an animal or a human, and identify the agent. This is not only true with viruses, it's also true with bacteria. We can also identify antimicrobial resistance.